Welcome to Faith. I'm Pia Owens, and this week, Elizabeth Polshu, our Director of Faith Formation, talks about Advent and what we should really be counting down to. Now here's the sermon. Good morning, Faith. Julie and I are in my home state of South Carolina, where I'm officiating the wedding for some longtime friends of our family. Now, I know that that leaves some of you wondering, hey, weren't you gone just a couple of weekends ago? And the answer is, yes, I was. But you know, we only get so many opportunities to journey with our family and friends as they experience life-changing events like this wedding, and Julie and I would not have missed it for the world, because we're committed to developing relationships that matter in our life, just as I hope you're committed to developing relationships that matter in your lives as well. But don't worry, I'm going to be back with you next week, and when I am, we're going to experience something amazing together. Because you see, next week we begin to go live online and live stream our worship experiences to the world. That's right, whether you've noticed it or not, we have a brand new camera system installed in the church. And we're going to begin using it next week to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world, to reach the world in brand new ways that God longs to save. I'm excited about that. I hope you'll be excited about that as well. But today you have a great guest preacher. Her name is Elizabeth Holshue, and Elizabeth is our Director of Faith Formation here at Faith Lutheran Church. But more than that, Elizabeth is one of those young adults in mission and ministry that my daughter Savannah was talking about last week that has something important, inspirational, and hopeful to say. So I look forward to joining you next week. But in the meantime, would you join me in welcoming Elizabeth to this platform as she brings to us a word of hope. Well, good morning. I am Elizabeth Holshue. For those of you who don't know me, um, I do work here on staff, and usually I'm in a gray Faith Kids shirt, and I'm with the kids who have gone to the other building now for their um, children's ministry time. So it is my privilege to be with you today um, here in your worship service. Um, And I want us to think about the season that we're in. It's December 3rd, and... That might make some of you kind of anxious as we get closer and closer to Christmas. So what are you thinking about? What is this season for you? Are you eagerly waiting for college students to come home so that you have a month to spend with them? Are you preparing for the little ones in your life so that you can make this a magical time for them? Are you um, preparing this season to be with a spouse or a significant other, and this is going to be that special season for you? Or are you one who just likes this season, and you're hoping maybe, just maybe, it'll get cold, and you can have some hot cocoa, and you like the lights? Like, is it just about the season? So I want you to think about what is that for you. And while you do that, I want to encourage you to think about a different perspective one that this video is going to show you.
has a lot of truths to it. I saw some of you, and we're looking at the colors going, wait a second. Um, our candles are not purple and pink. That is okay. Um, our tradition has changed a little bit. Some churches still use the purple and the pink. Um, but many Lutheran churches now use blue candles to remind us of hope because we also have the color purple appearing at Lent. So it gets kind of confusing if we use purple for both Advent and Lent. Um, so we have blue for Advent. Now, that pink candle, I'm just a little teeny bit sad that we don't have that. For those of you who know me, um, pink is my favorite color. And when I was in you know, maybe like third grade, in Sunday school, I was really wondering, while I sat in the pew at church, why is it that we have four Advent candles, but one of them's pink? Why? Why? Why would we do that? Um, so I was really concerned at a young age what that pink candle meant. And so once I found out that it symbolized joy, that made me even happier. Um, so I really like the pink candle, so churches that have those just gives me, like, happiness. I like the third week of Advent. But it, Advent is not about the candles. So I want to share with you this morning what Advent really is all about, why it is that we start decorating this sanctuary, why it is that there's so much energy and excitement about this season. And yet it's so very different from the excitement that the world offers during this season. So let's think about Advent as a cozier time, like the video suggested, a time of preparation. Now, waiting isn't easy, and quite honestly, I love Advent, and I can wait for the Christ child, but ask me to wait for something else, like life plans to unfold, um, wait for my car to get fixed. I don't like waiting. I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't like waiting. Think about all the places that you do wait. You wait for your tires to get rotated. You wait perhaps for your son or daughter to come home. It's 11.59. Where are they? Are they going to make it on time? Um, you wait to get in to see a doctor when you're sick. Perhaps you're waiting for a diagnosis. Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad? You wait to get into that school that you've applied for, you've worked hard for. Are you going to get in? Is that letter of acceptance going to come in the mail? You wait on the phone when you're trying to reconcile a bill and you find out that you've reached customer service, but there's higher call volume than usual, and you might just have to wait a little bit longer. But there are good times for waiting. Perhaps you are engaged and you're waiting to get married. That's an exciting time. Perhaps you are expecting and you're waiting that nine months for a baby. That's exciting. Perhaps you are counting down the weeks until vacation like some of those of you who are in school or are school teachers, you know that there's, what is it, two weeks before you're out? Two weeks, two and a half, ten days, something like that. You have that mapped out. I know you do. Um, so there are times in our lives where it's completely worth the wait. And I know that when I'm looking forward to something, I get a countdown going. I love a good countdown. Um, in kindergarten, even, I made those paper chains, you know the ones I'm talking about that are red and green construction paper, um, and you would take one strip off each day to count down until Christmas. Um, when I was in high school, I used to mark off the days in my planner of, okay, finish this day, I finished this day, it's that many more days until our break. I like to count down. And in church, our church season of countdown is really Advent. Um, Advent actually, that word Advent actually means coming because we prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. In our reading this morning, we hear from the prophet Isaiah, um, who's complaining about how hard it is to wait, actually. It's hard to experience God. And now while you first read this, 
You might not get that out of all the words because it's kind of jumbled. But Isaiah starts describing things that God has done in the past. Isaiah 64, 1 to 3. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. So the people of Israel could recall them, they could remember these stories that were told to them, but they were all waiting for their own awesome deed, right? They were waiting for God to reveal himself to them in an obvious way. Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, you who works for those who wait for him. So Isaiah and his people of Israel knew this truth, but they were really waiting for God to reveal himself. They wanted a clear sign an obvious way to know that God was with them in their struggle. Now, consider times that you've had to wait. When you're forced to wait on something, how long does it take you before you get distracted or need a distraction? For those of you who are my age or younger, it takes about one minute before what comes out. Your phone, thanks, yes, your phone comes out. And if you are um, frustrated because you're waiting, you are likely then to take a picture and Snapchat that to your friend and with all kinds of emojis and all kinds of frustrations, let them know just how annoying this wait is because you don't wanna just share that with yourself, you need others to know about it. Or better yet, you might be tagging the location that you're at. Ugh, I'm stuck at Kohl's, the line is two hours long, I'm never gonna get out of here, and it's gonna go up on the internet. Because why keep that to yourself? It needs to be publicized. We want people to know that. Um, but was Isaiah much different? All Isaiah wanted was somebody to know his struggles. We want somebody to know our struggles. Our phone is our fingerprint away from connections to our family or to our friends. Unfortunately, many of us don't turn to prayer right in those moments. We reach out to friends, but Isaiah really just wanted that connection. Isaiah wanted to know God and that God was connected with them. Um, but Isaiah and the people also knew that they weren't perfect, that they messed up. They didn't live perfect lives. Isaiah 64, 5 says, but you were angry and we sinned. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. Well, can any of you relate to that? Not being perfect not living um, a righteous life all the time, sinful. Yes, that's, that's who we are. Um, but again, let's think about waiting. When you're waiting a long time at a restaurant for your meal to get to your table, if you've waited over 10 or 15 minutes and you don't have food, do you think you're going to give a very gracious tip at the end of the evening? Probably not, because now you've let your self-centeredness, your frustrations, get the best of you, and you're taking it out on others. If you're waiting at a store for a long time and things aren't going your way, you're going to demand a discount or at least something half price, something that gets you a gain but someone else loses. When we get frustrated, we lose our sense of gratitude for other people. And all these reasons of us putting ourselves ahead of other people, letting our greed get the best of us, are really reasons why God shouldn't care for us. 
God shouldn't have to show awesome deeds to unrighteous people, people who don't take the time to put him first and then put others first. But that's where Isaiah is caught. He wants to see God, but he feels undeserving because he and his people haven't kept God's command. They are unrighteous. Just like Isaiah 64, verse 8 says, O Lord, you are our Father. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Isaiah yearns for God's presence and for some forgiveness. Don't you think that you too want that forgiveness? Don't you think that you want some grace each day, a new chance? But at the same time, you want to know that God's there, that you want to experience his love. So God knew that his people back then and his people today, that's you and me, all of us today, he knew that that's what we want, that's what we need. So he forgives our mess-ups. He forgives our selfish thoughts and desires and actions. And he gives us clean hearts instead so that we can proclaim his hope and love with other people. The world around you this season is filled with a December to-do list, lengthy Christmas lists of all the things that we want. The commercials are all abuzz about needing to redeem your Old Navy super cash because you can't miss this season's sweaters and jeans. It's all a buzz about trading in your car now so that you can have the 2018 model that has all the new upgrades. You need the smarter smartphone. And you need all of these things now. Right this moment you need them. Or else, what's going to happen? What about we change our perspective? Again, let's get cozy this season. Cozy with love. Let's light our blue candles in church, but also let's light our blue candles at home and in our hearts this season, each and every day, so that we can have God's hope. Let's start the day with a prayer. Let's focus on God first so that we can use his eyes and ears of hope to reach others. So just how might you do that? Well... Faith has some really awesome opportunities for you this year. Um, For everybody, there is a devotion that you can access right from your app, because Faith has an app. It's pretty cool. Um, On the fourth tab of the app, there's a section that says Advent. And you can click on the 2017 Daily Advent devotional and have it right at your fingertips. If the app's not your thing, it's on our website, or you could call the church, and we would happily get you connected with that. If you have a family with young children, perhaps you want something more family-friendly. We also have an option for you for that. On our Faith Facebook, our Faith Kids Facebook page, um, we will have an update of how you can sign up for a devotion. And you type in your email address, And then daily you receive a a new email that you can um, read with your family as you center your hearts around a scripture passage and some thoughts about that passage. So both of these devotions are awesome opportunities for you just to take a few minutes. They don't take hours. It's really just five or ten minutes a day. And I'm telling you, those minutes are going to make the rest of your day significant, the rest of your life this season significant, because it's going to focus your attention on God and his people first. It will give you a clean heart, a right spirit for this season. So these are some simple ways you can do this. But to take a step further, I would invite you to put some action behind what you're learning And take on something this season that you can serve. For instance, you can go to the Christmas tree out in the gathering place where there are still some CCA ornaments. And you can take an ornament, go purchase some things for boys and girls in need of things this Christmas, and bring it back next week. Or 
you can sign up to um, help serve this season. Faith is always in need of extra hands to serve, but especially during our holiday season. Now, Paul reminds us, taking it to the New Testament, Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians that God is with us because he writes to the church saying, For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians 1, 5 to 9. So God's given you everything you need. You do not need to be hung up on the iniquities you have, the mess-ups you've had, your past. That doesn't matter. God takes who you are and transforms you to be a person who can share hope to others. Beyond our church walls, you can serve in the community. You can um, serve at a hospital, visit patients. You could um, stock groceries at a food pantry. Or maybe you just look around in your neighborhood. Who is it that doesn't have company this Christmas? Who is it that might be that stranger that Dave talked about that might not know God's peace or God's hope? You could be that glimmer of hope in a seemingly hopeless world for somebody. So Advent's not really just about waiting around, hoping to see some awesome deed that God's going to reveal. Advent's really about spurring us on to do something significant, something that perhaps is a little countercultural to what's going on around us at Christmas. It includes praying, waiting, hoping, and all of those things you can do while serving somebody else. So join me this Christmas season in waiting, but not just waiting, waiting in a meaningful, significant way as we count down until baby Jesus comes here with us at Christmas. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much um, that you are with us each and every day. Um, We ask that you would bless this season as we seek to bless others, as we seek to find ways to show you to this world. Um, We pray that you would be with us, And give us the hope that we need to pass on to the hopeless. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And that concludes this week's message with Elizabeth Holshue. If you would like to come to one of our services, we are located at 6000 Morris Road, Flower Mound, Texas. Our service times are 9 o'clock for our classic worship and 1045 for our contemporary worship. Hope to see you here at Faith.